Hi, I'm Reverend Dan, Methodist Minister in Bognor Regis, Feltham and Westergate. This month I'm reflecting on what I've been learning from lockdown and I'm encouraging you to do the same. In John's Gospel, we find a story of a woman who Jesus encounters at a well. It's the heat of the day, the disciples have gone to get food, and Jesus is leaning against the well when the Samaritan woman comes to draw water. They talk, and the woman is confused about what Jesus is saying. Jesus talks about the living water that he has to offer, and she doesn't understand. Jesus says to her, you worship what you don't know. We worship what we know. The hour is coming when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for the Father seeks such as these to worship him. Lockdown has taught me that worship is bigger than, than I understand, or imagine, or even intended. Before lockdown, worship tended to be something that I went to, and often led. As I prepared and led, my hope was always that it was an offering, as a tapestry of music and song and words and prayers and conversation and reflection and gathering and fellowship and participation, with the hope and prayer that God's spirit was moving as the thread that weaves it all together into a beautiful tapestry that gives God glory. A beautiful image, but when lockdown hit, Worship was no longer something I could go to. Fellowship and gathering changed. Many of my congregation are not on the internet, and so it wasn't even feasible or inclusive to even begin to think about using Zoom and streaming to be worshipping community. Worship had to change for us, but worship also had to change for me. Or maybe it was me that needed to change. Suddenly worship was not something I could go to. Worship now was not an event to attend, but a practice to inhabit wherever I am, a way of life. I think those words of Jesus to the Samaritan woman are words that can encourage us today as we seek to learn from lockdown. We don't see here Jesus saying true worshippers will worship in a building for an hour on a Sunday. No, we here see Jesus saying true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. True worshippers will not let rules and restrictions, of which there were quite a few for Jesus back in his day, get in the way of spirit, get in the way of the spirit of worship, that they won't get in the way of the truth of the God we live to glorify and praise. The effect of lockdown and the absence of things to go to and to worship formally has led me and enabled me to begin to embrace the practice of worship in the day to day, every day. And I know I'm not alone. There are things people miss. I long for the day when we can get together and we can belt out a song from the depths of our souls. But even as we look to facilitate face to face gathered worship in the coming weeks, that won't happen for now. But despite the things we will miss, and we do miss, through time at home in our gardens, walking in towns and hillsides, people have found opportunities to worship with what we have, not what we have not. To worship where we are, to use the resources we have, to use the resources we've shared, and in doing so people have been meeting with God, who is with us and receives our worship no matter where we are. People have been singing, to CDs, radio and TV. People have gathered online or via telephone conferencing. It may not be physical face-to-face -face gathering, but whether alone or in number, these are undoubtedly gatherings of God's people living lives of worship, where the Spirit weaves our offering into a tapestry that gives God glory. Lockdown has taught me that worship is bigger, better, stronger, than I ever truly imagined. So I wonder, as we learn from lockdown, how might this challenge us in how we worship in spirit and truth in the future?